Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's so nice to have so many people, <laughs> especially young people. Uh, on Sunday, when I gave a Dharma talk, I have been talking on this text, Opening the Hand of Thought. This uh, book was originally written by my teacher, Kosho Uchiyama Roshi. And I, I was one of the translators on this book. Uh, and now I have been talking on this text for 15 years or so. In my record, this is 249 <laughs> talk. And almost end of this book. So uh, I continue to talk from the last month. Uh, if you have this text, page 153. Uh, today I'd like to talk uh, on two paragraphs. You know, usually I talk on one paragraph each time. That's why it takes so much time. So let me read these two paragraphs uh, from uh, bottom of page 153. Uh, the saying, gaining is delusion, losing is enlightenment, has very practical value. In our ordinary human life, we are always trying to fulfill our desires. We are satisfied only when all our desires are met. In Buddhism, though, it's just the opposite. It is important for us to leave our desires alone without trying to fulfill them. If we push this one step further, gaining is delusion, losing is enlightenment. We are talking about active participation in loss. Next page. Let me be clear that I'm not saying losing is important, so go help people out, go help people out by collecting what you can from them. That just makes you as uh, someone who gains. Rather, apply this saying just to yourself and give something up for breaking the ego's grip. Nothing is more effective than giving something up. So uh, this is a part of uh, Uchiyama Roshi's uh, final lectures at Antaiji. Last, right before he left Antaiji, he gave uh, long lectures, last about two, two hours. And this is part of his talk. And he has been talking on seven points that he had been uh, keeping in his mind to as a abbot or teachers at the monastery for while he was the, uh, the teacher. And he wanted to uh, transmit the, those seven point to his disciples. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, <laughs> I was one of them. Uh, this, uh, uh, this talk was given in uh, 1975, so almost 50 years ago, I was 26, uh, and I was there, and I actually listened to his talk. So uh, to me, you know, this teaching is all, almost like the uh, will of my teacher. So, and uh, I, I read this take this many times and I was a translator. So this is mainly what I have been studying and practicing.
and uh, in this uh, section, he talks about importance of zazen or sitting meditation. I think you did this morning. Uh, and about zazen, uh, this is the uh, uh, third point out of seven he talks. Before, after, before that, he talks about zazen or sitting meditation is our true teacher. And he started to talk about what, then what is zazen, uh, sitting meditation. And he said, zazen must work concretely in our daily lives as the two practices, vow and repentance. The three minds, magnanimous mind, nurturing mind, and joyful mind, and as the realization of the saying, gaining is delusion, losing is enlightenment. So in this paragraph, he talks about the final part of this uh, point, that is, uh, gaining is delusion and losing is enlightenment. I hope you understand what this means. It's a kind of difficult uh, in order to understand this very simple saying. We need to understand the entire structure of uh, Buddhist teachings, both Shakyamuni's early Buddhist teaching and Mahayana Buddhist teaching, and especially Dogen, the Master Dogen, uh, the founder of our tradition in Japan, the so-called Soto Zen. Uh, he said, gaining is delusion, gaining is talk, and losing is son. Talk is uh, satori, or and I, I'm sorry, opposite. Gaining is delusion, that is mayoi. And losing is satori, enlightenment. I think this is opposite, opposite of our common way of thinking. Uh, So Uchiyamuroshi is saying about this, uh, actually this is a saying by Sawaki Roshi, Uchiyama Roshi's teacher. He, Sawaki Roshi said, you know, gaining is delusion, losing is enlightenment. So we need to, I need to, to explain what this means. It's kind of logically, logically uh, twisted. If you think about Buddhist teachings or meditation practice, uh, if we attain enlightenment, this attain is gaining, and my, we, we become free from delusion, that is losing. So for our thinking, gaining is always positive, and losing is always negative, but he thought he was intentionally twisted the logic, and we need to understand what is this twist. Uh, at the end of last paragraph, uh, Uchamura said, uh, as I said before, Buddhism teaches impermanence and the quality of non-ego, that is no self. Letting go and opening the hand of thought, that is what we do in our Zazen, letting go of thought, whatever thought coming up, we let, we let go, we don't grasp. Of course, we don't fight against them. We just let them come and let them go. Is the foundation of Zen based on the Buddha Dharma. So he, he's talking about Buddha Dharma. 
and <clears throat> this uh, about this thing, uh, the original person Saki Roshi talks about <clears throat> losing and gaining. It's uh, from uh, this book, uh, the Zen teachings of homeless Kodo. This is a collection of Saki Roshi. Saki Kodo Saki Roshi was one of the uh, important uh, Japanese thought of the master uh, in, in 20th century. And uh, Uchiyama Roshi was disciple of Saki Roshi. So Saki Kodo Roshi was called homeless Kodo because he didn't have home. He didn't have temple, he didn't have monastery. He was always traveling all over Japan to teach. Anyway, uh, one of his and this is a collection of Saki Roshi's short sayings. And my teacher, Uchiyama Roshi, uh, made a comment, short comment, on his teacher's sayings. And what Saki Roshi uh, said about losing is as follows. <clears throat> uh, if we want to check this book, uh, section 36 and page 101. Saki Roshi said, to study Buddhism, he said, to study Buddhism is to study loss. Loss is losing. To study Buddhism is to study losing or loss or a son. Shakyamuni Buddha is a good example. He left his father's palace, his beautiful wife, his lovely child, and gave up his splendid clothes to become a beggar. He practiced begging with bare feet and a shabby robe for the rest of his life. All the Buddhas and ancestors suffer loss or losing intentionally. It's a big mistake if we become Buddhist monks hoping to be successful in the world. To be successful in the world means to gain. So the uh, <coughs> basis of uh, success or fa and failure on the uh, worldly life is what we, how much we gain and, and not losing. But he said, it's a big mistake for if we become Buddhist monks hoping to be successful in the world. No matter what we Monks are, no matter what, we monks are beggars from head to toe. So this is the meaning, you know, Shakyamuni Buddha left his palace when he became a spiritual practitioner. He was a prince, but he gave up all, uh, everything he owned and he became a practitioner. That means uh, he, he begged for food. He stopped working, he stopped producing anything. So he lost uh, everything he had in the world. So that was the original example of Buddhist monks. Uh, so we should follow Shakyamuni's example, but I, I don't think in this country, in America, you know, people become a Buddhist monk or a practitioner to be successful in the world, because Buddhism in America is not a big thing. But in Japan or other Asian Buddhist countries, it could be. You know, if uh, we study Buddhism, 
and practice diligently, we became a, a famous teacher, then we can be successful person in the world. But in uh, still, uh, fortunately, in this country, even if we know everything about Buddhism, it's not you become a successful person uh, in like uh, you know worldly system. And uh, I think it's a good thing. So we study and practice Buddhism only for the sake of Dharma, not to gain something worldly. Anyway, uh, Uchiyamoroshi's comment on this saying by Saoki Roshi is as follows. Uh, for us ordinary human beings, the easiest thing to understand is whether we gain or lose. Our fundamental premise is that gaining is better than losing. I think this is really true. From such a viewpoint, Shakyamuni Buddha was a very strange person. He was almost opposite. He walked the path of loss. He lost everything he had without thinking of gain. Why did he begin on such a path? All conditioned things are impermanent. Therefore, the criteria of loss and gain are constantly changing because of uh, seeing the impermanence, you know, it is said in Shakyamuni's biography, it is said one time he uh, left his palace, uh, until then he didn't see the uh, reality of worldly life. But when he left his palace, he found an uh, aging person, and he, until then he didn't or see, you know, something negative in his life. And the next time he saw sick person. And third day he saw a dead person. So he found a, a suffering, negative part of his life. That is, you know, a process of impermanence. Sooner or later we become old person aging and they will become sick and we must die. When we see this, he found to seek after success or gainings, you know, wealth or position, fame or uh, <coughs> power. Does it make sense? And the last day he found uh, he met a religious practitioner and he wanted to live like the final person, to live uh, being free from, you know, suffering. So that was his, uh, not a purpose, but his motivation to let, to lose, give up, give up his everything he had, and he practiced. So what Shakyamuni did was really opposite of what usual people do in a, in a common world. And he walked the path of loss without thinking of gain. Why did he begin on such a path? Why did he begin on such a path? So what was the reason? And as I said, he, because he saw impermanence and suffering of human life. Uh, all conditioned things are impermanent. The, therefore, the criteria of loss and gain are constantly changing. Shakyamuni Buddha saw this limitation of the path of gain and loss and 
the down state he gave it up and uh, I think this next one is important he chose a path he chose a path beyond gain and loss uh, so Ujamlo said uh, he lost everything but uh, losing everything means he wished to live uh, beyond gain and loss. And in order to live or in order to walk a path beyond gaining and losing, he, lose, he lost everything. It's kind of an interesting logic here. He intentionally walked the path of loss to show us the way beyond gaining and losing. So we need to understand this. In order to show us, in order to walk the path beyond gaining and losing, he intentionally practiced losing. Uh, You know, this thing by Sartreus is a kind of uh, twisting and more common or well-known than teachings about losing and gaining is <coughs> uh, so another word for song is shit, meaning the same to lose. And uh, the common, uh, much well, better known expression about losing and gaining is uh, uh, actually appeared in a very well known Zen poem called Shin Jin Mei. Uh, maybe I don't have time to talk about what Shin Jin Mei is. This is a, a famous Zen poem. Uh, made by Chinese th uh, third ancestor of them, called uh, So San. And part of this long uh, poem is uh, Toku, Shitsu, same as Toku Shitsu, and Toku Shitsu Zehi. He is another uh, kind of example of dichotomy, right and wrong. So gaining and losing, and uh, right and uh, wrong, or, bad, or good and bad. Uh, the poem said, gain and loss, right and wrong. Ichi, chi, ho, kya. means one time at once and ho kyaku means to let go or throw away that means uh, this poem is saying we should throw away let go or open our hand about all these dichotomies losing and gain uh, gaining and losing and right and wrong good and bad uh, all those dichotomies Dichotomy means discrimination. So we need to go beyond all this all kind of discrimination. And discrimination is the basis foundation of our thinking and making choice. I like this, therefore I try to get this, and I don't like that, therefore I try to escape from that. That is our kind of a, uh, almost a principle of human life. And that principle of human life makes our life sansara. <coughs> that means we want to gain positive things and we want to be free from or escape from negative things. 
So our life becomes chasing after or running after something we want or escaping from something we don't like. So we have to always running to, that, to get that thing or to escape from other things, negative things. And sometimes uh, we can be successful and we feel happy like heavenly beings. But more often uh, we are not so successful. So sometimes on some extreme, ex extreme conditions we feel like we are in the hell. And, and conditions are, are always changing. That is a, actually transmigration within samsara. Uh, if you can believe transmigration, life after life, past life to present life and present life to the next life, uh, that is usually very common teaching of Buddhism. Uh, if you can believe that, it's okay. But if, if you don't believe, actually I don't believe. I, I think that is okay. Still, uh, we are transmigrating right within this lifetime because things are changing. Sometimes we feel like uh, heavenly beings and sometimes, sometimes we feel like a uh, uh, hungry ghost. We always want to gain something. Or we try to compete with others and we think, I am okay, they are bad. So fighting against those so-called bad people is a uh, purpose of my life. That is uh, uh, Ashura's way of life. And sometimes we feel like everything is suffering, like a hell dwellers. So if you can believe the transmigration, life after life, that is fine. But if, even if you don't believe that things, uh, we can see transmigration within this lifetime, even, even moment by moment, we transmigrate. <coughs> within not only six, but many more different conditions, many different realms. That is because we live in this way. I want to gain that thing, I want to escape from that thing. And then, how can we find a stable foundation of a life? that is without gaining and without losing. That is, when we become free from this kind of discrimination, then we can find a stable uh, foundation of our life. That means uh, whatever come, or whatever situation we are in, we try to find the uh, uh, best way to do not only for me to gain, or not uh, only for me to escape from th something we don't like, but try to find the best way to make the situation better for all people in that condition. And that is uh, Bodhisattva vows, actually. So, mm, Friends, uh, Samakiroshi said, <coughs> uh, gaining is delusion and losing is enlightenment. I, I think he's talking about uh, the priest, Japanese Buddhist priest. <coughs> <coughs> and when, uh, we think of Shakyamuni Buddha's leaving home, he became a monk. Buddhist monk. Uh, but at least people in this room are not monks, including myself. I call myself priest because I have family and I have a job, so I don't think I'm a monk. Uh, but in Mahayana Buddhism, there's no such uh, clear distinction between lay people and monks or uh, priest. We are all of us are uh, bodhisattvas. 
anyway, so, uh, you know, there's one saying from Dhammapada. Uh, Dhammapada is one of the oldest uh, scriptures in Buddhism. And <clears throat> uh, Shakyamuni said, one path, one path leads to worldly gain and honor. That is one path, one way we can live to gain worldly honor. And quite another path leads to nirvana. So there are two paths. One is to live uh, to gain things and uh, without losing, and another is nirvana. And nirvana is uh, peacefulness without struggling, without chasing after we want to get or escaping from we don't like. This stable way of life is peacefulness or nirvana. So Buddha said there are two paths and he chose uh, the path beyond gaining and losing. Uh, and uh, he continued, having realized this truth, this truth means there are two, two, two paths or two ways of life. One is to try to gain things we want and another is to find nirvana, peacefulness. Having realized this truth, let not the monk, the true follower of the enlightened one, young for homage for, from others, but let him cultivate serenity, serenity of mind and dispassion. So Buddha said there are two paths. And when he left home, he chose the path which leads to nirvana or cessation of suffering. Uh, so we need to understand when Sarah is saying gaining is delusion, losing is enlightenment, uh, he said the same thing. You know, he, uh, he was almost like a monk. He was alone. He didn't have monastery. Uh, he didn't have family, he was by himself uh, traveling to teach um, Buddhist teaching and Zen practice. And Uchamuraj was the same, almost the same. He had a temple, but uh, while he was the abbot, he didn't have family. So he could focus on uh, this path. And so they negate the past to gain things. But uh, unfortunately, we are not the monks. We choose, at least I'm not sure about you, but I choose to live with family. To live with family, I had to get to have a job to find, to support my family. And yet, I couldn't stop studying and practicing Buddhist teaching. So, somehow we need the middle way between these two paths, two paths. So, in a sense, it's more difficult. It's not uh, uh, making a choice, this or that. Somehow we need both as a, a lay practitioner. Uh, we need to live in the uh, common world in which we have to gain things or try not to lose things. That is almost a, a principle of human, uh, at least modern society. If we lose everything, someone needs to take, take care of me. So, in order to live as a, a good part of the society, somehow we need to uh, support ourselves. But if we completely live in that way, we lose our peace of mind, 
we are always chasing after things and try to get that thing. And when we think I achieved, I gain what I have been looking for, then our life is successful. Otherwise, our life is failure. Uh, I don't like that kind of life. And yet, I don't think I can live like Shakyamuni or Sakiroshi. Uh, so I want to be a part of this modern society. So how can these two uh, side we need to gain without losing and uh, losing is enlightenment and gaining is delusion. How can we find a middle path between these two lives? So our life or our practice as a uh, Bodhisattva is kind of more kind of complicated. We have to think, we have to understand both kind of a principle and try to find the middle. How can we uh, work as a healthy part of this community or this society? And yet, how can we find, uh, or how can we avoid losing peace of mind? I think this is all, all also a point. What is the connection or relation between, between sitting in the Zendo? and our, our day-to-day -day lives outside the zendo. You know, when we sit in the zendo and facing the wall, we can let go of everything. We can go beyond any dichotomies, and it is safe in the zendo. But if you go outside, you have to think and make distinction, you know, such as, uh, red light and green light and yellow light. <laughs> and we have to make if we cross the road or not. Uh, otherwise, we cannot live even one day. So we need both discrimination and beyond discrimination. Or gaining is uh, delusion, losing is enlightenment. and. Uh, we need to gain, we, we try to avoid uh, losing, and uh, beyond gaining and losing. So there are three, what do you call, three choices. And within uh, the path beyond, uh, beyond gaining and losing, both part, both sides, can be incorporated. That is our hope as a Bahayana Buddhist or Bodhisattvas. That is what middle path or middle way means. Anyway, that is what I have to say about uh, this first uh, paragraph. That is the saying, gaining is delusion. Losing is enlightenment has very practical value. So in order to uh, practice the way beyond good and bad, or right and wrong, and gaining and losing, we need to practice losing. This is a strange to practice absolute truth beyond good, good and bad. Uh, we have to do good, and we have to avoid bad. This is a, uh, this is a, uh, actually Dogen's logic. Uh, in, when he uh, wrote about uh, one of the Shakyamuni's teaching, that is, we should avoid everything evil or bad, and we have to practice everything good or unwholesome. Unwhol and we need to keep our mind pure. And keep our mind pure means 
go beyond such good and bad. And uh, when he talks, Dogen wrote about this absolute truth beyond good and bad, gaining and losing, he said, when we hear such an absolute teaching beyond any discrimination or dichotomy, we hear that uh, we should avoid evil and we should practice good. Otherwise, we don't hear the right teaching. So when we see uh, the absolute reality beyond good and bad, right and wrong, or gaining and losing, we hear that we have to do good. We have to avoid uh, unwholesome. And we have to practice losing. Because uh, before that, because we have a kind of a karmic tendency, I want to gain. I want to get that thing, to be free from this desire to gain things I want, is the practice to find the reality beyond good and bad, or gaining and losing. So in order to, when we hear the teaching about the absolute truth beyond good and bad, or gaining and losing, we have to practice losing. That is Dogen's uh, logic. Uh, it's, I don't think it appears, uh, this logic, this strange, strange logic appears in Shakyamuni's teaching. But I think this is a really important point in Dogen's teaching. Uh, so to attain enlightenment, does not mean we become free from any discrimination and we can do anything because there's no such, such discrimination. But when we hear that teaching, we have to do good, wholesome. And we have to avoid uh, doing evil or unwholesome. And next sentence he said, we are satisfied only when all our desires are met. In Buddhism, though, it's just the opposite. It is important for us to leave our desires alone, because our desires chasing after things based on our desires create or makes our life sansara. So, and we, our life becomes transmigration. So, uh, to leave our desires alone without trying to fulfill them. That is what we do in, when we sit in the zendo. But when we go out and work as a part of a community, we have a something we need to accomplish and we need to avoid th things. And uh, he said, if we push this one step further, gaining is delusion, losing is enlightenment. We are talking about active participation in loss. So we have to practice losing. And the next paragraph is Uchen Roshi's uh, kind of a caution to Buddhist priest. You know, uh, at that uh, <coughs> group who are listening to his talk, there are many Buddhist priests. Uh, when we think we hear this kind of teaching, losing is important, then what Buddhist priests do is, is teach uh, his uh, uh, members of, of their temples to losing is important, so why don't you make donation <laughs> to the temple? You know, that is what uh, Buddhist priests are always doing. And not only Japanese Buddhist priests, but American Zen centers, <laughs> we, might, we <coughs> might do the same thing. So 
what uh, Uchamno is saying here is, uh, let, let me be clear that I am not saying losing is important. So go help people, go help people out by collecting what you can from them. So Buddhist priest always ask for making donation to the temple or to themselves. But he says, if we do such a thing, he says, that just makes you the someone who gains. If you ask the uh, members to make donation, then you or the temple gain things. And that is opposite of this teaching. Rather, apply this saying just to yourself and give something up for breaking the ego's grip to become free from egocentricity. Nothing is more effective than giving something up. So, you know, when uh, uh, I was working for fundraising to establish uh, this temple uh, more than 20 years ago, <coughs> you know, people work for fundraising. Uh, you know, this is also something uh, we need to do in uh, this American uh, society at this time, or at this stage of the history of Buddhism. We have to make uh, fundraising. Uh, but while I was working with some people uh, for uh, raising funds uh, to establish this temple, I asked to those people, uh, we have a koan, uh, and the koan is how can we do work on fundraising without greed? If, if our temple is established because of our greedy mind, then there's no way to practice uh, the Dharma that teach us don't be greedy. So uh, this is really a koan. How can we uh, do fundraising with that greedy in mind? That means uh, I, I, I thought at the time, I thought, you know, if I establish this temple or this community for the sake of my desire, then this is really a greed. So I have I found I have to make effort to create this place for the Dharma. So it, this is not my possession, but this is Buddha's possession. So <clears throat> that is a really important point. And, and, and when we think about our Zazen meditation practice, we are the same thing. That means, if we, uh, that is, you know, uh, before uh, last, last month I talked about the Zazen practice within six realms of Sansara. Those are practice to benefit this person as an individual. We practice to accomplish something we want. If we practice meditation in that way, that is not a Bodhisattva practice. Uh, well, uh, that is what I have to say this morning. Uh, do you have any question or comment? I hope you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> But I think this kind of a twisted logic is a really important point to understand Mahayana Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Please. There's a Zen poem that I really love, and it reminded you of the same one I was wondering, but mm -hmm. 
I believe it was from somebody referred to as the third patriarch. Yeah. That's what he... So the same, that's the same poem. poem. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's why I said no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'll just say, I've always thought that out of the whole book, that last uh, line, the last sentence of that second paragraph about there's nothing better for mm -hmm. breaking the grip of the ego than giving something up, is like my favorite sentence. <laughs> I just think that's so interesting, and it's just something to move on. Yeah, what, you know? he's, what he's talking is, even, we, even when we practice something like a, a meditation like Zazen, in the deep in our mind, we think, what, do I, what can I get from this? It just, feels like there, it just feels like there's always something we can give up. Yeah. It's like we, there's always something we can open the hand. It might be our idea, it might be a possession, it might be, it's like it's just, it's just this moment by moment practice. Yeah. Of breaking the grip of the ego, not not destroying the ego, not suppressing the ego, not labeling the ego, just like breaking its grip. You know, it's like, what can I give up? I just think that's like one of the best teachings he has in this whole book. So our practice has no end. You know, when we are beginners, we want to get something, and even, uh, I'm sorry, but I cannot practice Zazen anymore because of my uh, physical condition. But still, uh, when I give a talk, some, somehow deep in my mind, how can I uh, give a good talk? Then people can respect me. So if I give a talk to receive some uh, appreciation, then uh, my talk is uh, action to gain appreciate other people's appreciation. Okay. But how can I just talk as an as offering? And it's really difficult. You know, I have been practicing this more than 50 years still. This is a problem. So our life has no end. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anything else? Anybody online have a question? Comment? <laughs> I guess I have a question that I could, could okay. ask. Um, so the uh, IU meditation group is here today, so mm -hmm. it's nice young people. <laughs> um, so I thought I'd ask if you have any advice that you would give to someone who uh, has recently started a meditation practice uh, that may not necessarily be a Buddhist one, um, so just kind of a, something maybe general for someone just starting out and trying to understand what it means to, to sit. Well, I think good point of Buddhist meditation, including our practice of Zazen, is you don't need to be a Buddhist. You don't need to believe what Buddha taught. But just sit, calm down, and enjoy uh, silence and tranquility, peacefulness. That's good enough. If you want to be a great Zen master, uh, you need to do. <laughs> Uh, something, but uh, you have you don't need to do uh, such a you know uh, you don't need to have such a goal, but just be enjoy moment by moment. Uh, if you want to gain something from this uh, sitting practice, uh, if you feel you know this is too painful or too boring and good for nothing. Uh, you know, it's difficult to continue, but just be quiet and, uh, and experience uh, uh, peacefulness. I think that is enough. You can enjoy. And if you think this is something meaningful for you, maybe you can study Buddhist teaching, or you can go to a Buddhist monastery, 
if you wish. I hope, I hope this, this is important to enjoy it. You, you know, our dozen or our meditation is not to a torture. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Anyone online? Shall we wrap it up? Okay. Thank you very much.